everybody. I'm Tawata. My first name is Masato and last name is Tawata. Uh, I'm very happy to, to be here today and share my ideas, my way of, of life with you. As I was introduced, I'm a physician. I practice medicine. But my talk today is not for health, but rather wealth. And I've been thinking or contemplating how to enrich my own life for the last six years. And recently, I think I have found the best way for me, at, at least the best way for me at present. And if I follow that way, I'm very happy and I have a sense of fulfillment every day. But this doesn't mean that uh, everything goes as I want or I'm living a, an easy and cozy life. No, not at all. On the contrary, everything and nothing goes as I want. And it is very, very uh, exhausting every day when I uh, come back home. But next morning, I'm awake, I feel re-energized and have every, have every intention to do my best again. So my way of living makes me feel that way. So I'm going to introduce you my way of life uh, from now on under the title How to Maximize One's Own Potentials and, and subtitle Let's Read Let's Lead a Meaningful Life by Whole Brain Thinking. Okay, these are my role models. You see uh, Dr. Omura from Yamanashi, a Nobel Prize winner of Physiology of Medicine, and uh, uh, Daladam the 14th, Bill Gates and many others, but the greatest role model is the person in the center by the name of Victor Franco. I'm going to introduce, you to, uh, I'm going to introduce him to you uh, in more detail later, okay? Uh, these are the topics of my great concern these days. There are six of them, but it takes you know, more than two hours to cover these all stories. So, uh, let me uh, focus on three topics today, okay? So without further ado, let me introduce you the first topic, which is meaning and mission of life, or how I should live right now. And the meaning and mission of life is very important and prerequisite in order to maximize your potential. So it's very important, okay? So this is my greatest role model, Victor Franco. He was a psychiatrist. But he was a Jew, so he was uh, captured by Nazi by the Nazi during the World War II and sent to concentration camps, including the notorious Auschwitz-Birkenau. But he he was always on the edge of death. But he survived almost three eight years of confinement. After he was liberated from the camps, he wrote many books. And in the first camp, he wrote uh, uh, the following. There is always a meaning in life. Even if you will despair of your life, your life would never despair of you. And he even went to the length of saying that ultimately we should not to expect to our life. It's the other way around. We must recognize that it's us who are being asked, who are being expected from our life. What a strong message, isn't it? Isn't it? Okay, so there are many, many messages or, or uh, you know, wisdoms and maxims by, by my role models, but let me uh, skip uh, the slide in between and uh, in between and introduce you the last slide of this topic. But I think that the, the, the content of the, the slide, which I skipped, are very important. So please read and ruminate over and over again. Is that okay? So, that, uh, Mr. Viordo, who is a psychologist and, and also anthropologist, said two things. First, do your best today, as if tomorrow would be your last day. I interpret this to do my best, to do your best, and to enjoy the present moment as much as you can, as much as I can. And I'm doing it right now, you know, introducing my ideas, my way of life, or sharing my way of life with you, okay? And secondly, he said, write your own eulogy or condolence of your funeral. You may be surprised by hearing this. But what he meant is that first, how 
Do you want to be appreciated from people around you, from your family members, from your friends, from your colleagues? Okay? And then, think, and secondly, think and plan how to live the rest of your life in order to be appreciated that, that way from those people. And I think that would be your meaning and mission. And based on the missions and based on the uh, uh, advices or wisdoms and maxims of my role models, I have written my mission statement of life. And I can, I can assure you, but uh, I have written my mission statement of life. And one of my missions is to help other people, to support other people, especially young people like you, optimize or maximize their life. That's why I'm here, sharing my ideas with you, my way of life with you. And I couldn't be happier, I couldn't be happier if you can get a hint or find a clue to contemplate, to think your own life, so that you can optimize or maximize your life. Okay? Okay then, let me move on to the second and the main topic of today's talk. How to maximize one's own potential, your potentials. You have many tremendous potentials. And in other, in other words, how to get self-actualization and how self-transcendence. I think, uh, I think many of you may have seen this pyramid shape. Uh, you know, Abraham Maslow, uh, who is a psychologist, uh, proposed there are five layers, five tiers of hierarchy in human needs, starting from physiological needs at the bottom and to the self acquisition need at the top. So it's very natural for us to, uh, to do our best or to aim at self actualization and so it is very important for you, for young people like you, to do their best, to do your best. But in my opinion, that is something that should be done by, by adults surrounding the young people. And these are the list uh, of what we should do, and, you know, the surrounding people should do. First of all, treat, let's treat, why don't we treat every children, every, uh, every child, as is stress values. You know stress values? Uh, it's a musical instrument created by stress values. Each musical instrument, uh, for example, viola or body, has million dollars value or more. But we cannot price, uh, uh, we cannot put a price tag on children. You know, they are priceless. So we have to, but, but, but we have to treat them but with great tender and care without, without spoiling or indulging them, okay? And, and, and secondly, why don't we inspire or encourage them? For example, by saying, you can change the world. And you were born to make this planet a better place. And so, okay, keep talking to them, okay? And then why don't we, ex ex uh, ins uh, why don't we uh, motivate them by expectation, you know? Those who are expected from surrounding people develop their talents and really get, really, uh, really achieve what you know surrounding people expected to achieve. It's called Pygmalion effect. Pygmalion effect or Rosenthal effect. And the reverse phenomena is also observed. Reverse phenomena is observed. Uh, for example, you know, even a highly talented child deteriorate his talent or her talent simply because not by, by not being expected from surrounding people. It's called golem effect. Okay? So another way to motivate them is to praise them. But, but we must recognize that there are, there are, uh, the, the, math, the way how to praise them may affect their future. There are many two ways to praise. Okay, first, uh, we, uh, we, we can praise them by, for example, you have a tremendous uh, talent, or you must be a genius, things like that, okay? And another way to praise is to uh, say, uh, for example, you have done a, a tremendous effort, or you have done a, a lot of discipline. The latter way, that 
other way, it's better because it, it increases the possibility to let children overcome the obstacle which they may face in the future. This is based on the psychological experiment. So let's, let's, let's praise them that you have done a tremendous effort. Not, not uh, you know, uh, for example, you have a talent, things like that, yeah, okay? Okay, beyond certain age, praising may not be a good motivator anymore because praising have, have in a sense, a, a looking down viewpoint. So, uh, in, in, under such circumstances, you know, under Larian psychology, out of case, to give them appreciation or gratitude. And appreciations or gratitude are a, a, a good motivator at any ages. Okay? And also there are taboos. Taboos. Uh, for example, you can't do it. You can make it or you can be it. Never say these words under any circumstances. Uh, these taboo words nip off the, the talent or nip off the buzz of talents or uh, 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 potentials. Okay, it's, it's like, just like a criminal conduct, okay? And also, try to implant an entrepreneurial spirit. Entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, well, I don't have time to go into detail, but uh, ultimately, entrepreneurial spirit uh, may lead to how to run his or her life, our life well. Okay? And concerning, concerning uh, disabled, so-called disabled uh, children or people, why don't we regard them uh, with, with an extraordinary talent? Please remember that even Einstein, Einstein, Edison, were labeled as having difficulty in learning in their, in their early childhood or uh, ADHD syndrome at the present time. Okay? Okay, let's move on to the right side of the panel. Uh, you may know the, the, it's, uh, the golden rule in psychology. Golden rule says treat others as you want to be treated. Okay? But there is a rule which is superior to golden rule, and it is called platinum rule. I'm sorry, platinum rule. And the platinum rule says, don't do to yourself which you should not do to others. Well, it, you know, well, we should not insult other people by slanders or abusive languages. Yeah, this is true. But uh, quite often, we have a tendency to do our, to, toward ourselves. For example, when you make a mistake, you may have a, a, a tendency to think or to say to yourself that what a goof I am, what a stupid I am. But don't do this. It's, it's against platinum rule. Okay? Don't do it. If this, this kind of action piles up, your self-respect decreases and your uh, ignorant <coughs> complex increases under such circumstances you cannot hope for self actualization Let alone, let alone self-transcendence. So don't do it. Now, I have said that uh, don't insult others. We should not insult other people by slanders or abusive languages. But how about in reality? We are surrounded so many abusive languages, aren't we? Especially in this internet society, right? So we have to protect ourselves from those abusive languages. And for this, for this, Ms. Eleanor Roosevelt, the, the wife of the 32nd President of the United States, Franklin Roosevelt, left a very wonderful message. She said, quote, no one can hurt you without your consent. You know, this is quite simple, but it has a very deep meaning in it. You know, we get hurt by slanders or abusive language simply because we get agreed, we, we agree to, or we give consent to the abusive languages. So just neglect it. Just turn a deaf ear to those abusive languages. That's all. That's simple. You know what I mean? 
but how can I do that? How can you do it? do that? You know, in spite of the fact that we are surrounded of over overwhelming volume of abusive languages. There comes the meaning and mission of your life, the vocation of your life. If you have found established meaning or a mission or vocation of your life, then those can the, 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 those missions or vocations may be it becomes the pillar or the mainstay in the center of yourself to rely on. So you will be disturbed by those abusive languages, so you can neglect those abusive languages. Okay? So, let me ask you a question. So, uh, those of you who think that there was at least one adult, except your parents, I mean, who inspired you, who encouraged you, or who expected to you in your early childhood? Please raise your hand. Ah, no, eh, to, eh, society kind of character, that is, eh, 皆さんの中で小さい頃に皆さんをですね励ましたりですね、その皆さんに期待してくれた大人以外に誰かあ、あれして、ええー、その両親以外に誰か一人でも大人いたといたと思う方はですね、Please raise your hand. Okay, good, good. Uh, not many. But not many, but uh, don't be discouraged other people. Because you have come this far, you know, you have come this far without, without those encouragement or expectation, which verifies that your self-discipline, your effort has been tremendous, okay? So uh, from now on, but I, from today on, I mean, I ask every one of you to become a different person. A person who encourages, who inspires, inspires other people, who expect to other people around you, especially children, whether they are related to you or not. Okay, let's try to make other people's life meaningful. By doing so, I think you can make your, your life even more meaningful. And don't forget, don't forget to, to encourage or inspire yourself to expect to yourself, okay? Don't forget to inspire yourself. That's all, but that's what I always do. Otherwise, I could be a, a despicable person, you know. I have to be a despicable person. I want, I like to be an impeccable person, rather. An impeccable person, not in the sense that I don't have any faults, but in the sense that I maintain, you know, curiosity and quest for growth at any ages. Okay, so these conditions are all met. You know, children are, are now on the platform from which they aim at self-actualization or self-transcendence. So these are the, you know, the priming stage for children. That's why I number zero for this panel, okay? So let's see uh, the Number one, you know. uh, Jason Self says that uh, did, uh, from now on, the, 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 the method for self actualization uh, visual, visualization of your goal or dream in letters raises achievement rate ninefold. It's tremendous, isn't it? But I think you, you know this effect from your own experience, right? Okay. And psychology of possibility uh, presents as a very wonderful way of thinking. Okay, so if you are given a special assignment, or if you are, uh, if you are, uh, if you found your challenging um, issue, don't think if you can do it or not. Don't think you can uh, solve the problem, the issue or not. But rather, think how you can do it how you can make it happen, how you can solve the issue. And this is the way of thinking by psychology possibility. So don't set a ceiling on your possibility, on your, on your capability in the first place. So sky is the limit. Okay? Sky is the limit. And uh, Mr. Kobe, uh, you may have read this book, uh, Seven ha Habits of Highly Effective People. The author of this book, Mr. Kobe, says that uh, we cannot 
manage time. He says, "Father, rather we should manage ourselves." But it, what he means is that, uh, for example, if you have a, a very many items on your schedule, and prioritize the each each item based on your mission or vocation of your life. And if the priority is very very low, then you extrude from your schedule. You determine to extrude the, the item from your from your from the schedule. That's what it means. It means to manage yourself. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, another uh, advice: uh, be proactive, but be responsible. What it means is, you know, proactive people never say like this. For example, I have to do something. I need to do something. I must to do something. They never say this, this kind of expression. Rather, they use the expression, I choose to do, I prefer to do, I am determined to do. This raises your possibility to, uh, you, you know, you, uh, to realize your dream or your uh, the goal. Okay, be responsible, be, be pro proactive. Okay? Okay, there are many, uh, uh, you know, advices, but uh, let me skip the slide in between uh, because uh, there's time. And, and another, maybe uh, tackle the mundane with whole body and soul. You know, the process matters. It's, it's, it's the, the outcome is byproduct. So your attitude toward what you're going to do is very, very important. Okay? And also, uh, 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 Afro says, uh, allocate to play your part well, to play your uh, role well. But not only do that, try to outperform the, the, your role. Outperform that you're supposed to do, that you expect to do. Okay? And there are several uh, psychological psychological effects named after the people, after a person uh, who found, who observed the effect of, of, of the phenomenon. Zygonic effect or Dunning-Kruger effect and Heinrich's law. Heinrich's law is very famous in the field of risk management. Uh, for example, if you have a one serious uh, accident, there are 30 small accidents hidden and moreover, 300 tiny incidents or human uh, errors are hidden under one serious condition, uh, under one serious, uh, uh, under one serious uh, uh, accident. I mean, if I translate this into, you know, for self actualization uh, let me put it this way: if you want a one visible, conspicuous outcome, then you need 300 or more tiny improvement in their efforts, okay? And let me introduce you the idea of an you know, uh, ancient Greek uh, uh, philosopher, Aristotle. He said that uh, we are what we repeatedly do. We are what we repeatedly do. So excellence then is not an act, it's a habit. And Lola Boyd, uh, she is a, a neuroscientist, and she says that uh, we can transform our brains by by our behaviors and and, and habits at any ages, at any ages, and you can you can watch her YouTube you know, lecture by accessing this address. Okay, so uh, maybe the best way for self actualization is to to find your original way to you know for for achieving you know self actualization your original way original way and also have a have a good habit have a good habit good habit for your for your mission for your vocation of life it depends you know each person has a different <coughs> missions or vocation so uh, so, but anyway, try to find your, your good habit, okay?
Abraham Maslow continued to observe people, and he he found that there was there was a group of people who who went beyond self actualization level, and he said he called it the uh, group of those as self transcenders, self self transcenders. Okay. And self transcenders are, you know, almost, uh, you know, sky the limit. There's no limit, okay? It's, it's just like this. And those, for those who have uh, established, who have achieved self actualization and remain that level, it's no more than a comfort zone. So I ask every one of you to aim at self-transcendence self level, okay? And your brains are much, much smarter than, than you imagine, so you have a tremendous potentials. Okay, so there are several ways, and uh, one of the ways is for self-transcendence is, is work on epigenetics. Epigenetics is the, the cutting edge, uh, cutting edge of uh, 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 genetic science, and our, you know, the expressions of genes are determined by our beliefs, by our thoughts, and by our hopes. So if we mimic, if you mimic your role model, then you can mimic the expressions of genes like those models. But beyond certain level, you have to be original. Otherwise, you cannot uh, uh, overcome your role model, okay? And curiosity and imagination is very, uh, also important. A great scientist once said that I have no special talent, but I'm only passionately curious. Can, you imagine, uh, can any one of you guess who said this? Can anyone of you guess who said this? He said, imagination is more important than knowledge. The important thing is not to stop questioning. Or, and, and, and curiosity has its own reason for existing. Right, exactly, yes. Yes, exactly. He said, Einstein said this. So, it is believed that the, 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 the principle of general, general, uh, uh, general, general principle of relativity is the fruit of his curiosity, curiosity and imagination. Okay. Okay. Uh, there is also a, a very uh, 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 there is also a person who sent a very creative life. Uh, it's Leonardo da Vinci. And he said, he also, uh, in one of his motto is to maintain insatiable curiosity. So curiosity and imagination is very important. Okay? So be curious and be imaginative and be creative, okay? Another way uh, to get self-transcendence is, I think, uh, to borrow uh, other people's help, uh, other person's help. But in this case, you not only uh, borrow other uh, person's help, but you also lend your help to other person. It's called synergy. Synergy is a talent to, synergy means to create a new value, new value by cooperation. And this person is a, uh, is a cancer expert, and he, he, in his book, he said that uh, those who have synergy, mentality of synergy, also have serendipity. And serendipity is a, is a talent uh, to find a treasure in ordinary things. It also means to turn misfortune into something fortunate. And this is very important. And, you know, uh, I can raise many examples uh, in which, uh, you know, uh, 
serendipity played an important role in Nobel Prize uh, class uh, inventions or discoveries. For example, you know, Dr. Ventrogen found X-ray by accident. It was serendipity. And Dr. Fleming, who, who discovered penicillin, it, it was also a serendipity. It's a, it was. And this person, Dr. Shimomura, found the green fluorescent protein from jellyfish. This was also uh, the product of serendipity. So serendipity is a very, very important talent. So be serendipitous, OK, for you. And this serendipity and synergy are derived from altruism. Altruism is to work, to do for other people. Dita desu ne, dita, nihongo de dita desu ne. And altruism reminds me of Dr. Shimomura, Dr. Omura, Satoshi Omura from, from Yamanashi, a Nobel Prize winner uh, 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 in physiology or medicine. His grandmother kept talking to him to do to do something for other people. He was imprinted this altruism over and over and over again from his grandmother. So altruism is very important. You know, it's, it, it produces you know, synergy and, and serendipity. And if you bring up or educate your children or grandchildren with altruism and making it uh, one of the, ha ha the top uh, priority in your family tradition, then one of the descendants of your of your family uh, might could gain could win a Nobel Prize in the future. Okay, altruism. Okay, now Abraham Maslow, a uh, psychologist. It reported that uh, the, the five characteristics, uh, no, I mean, 11 characteristics of, of transcendence, self transcendence. And let me introduce you five of them. Five of them. Those are the, the, the characteristics of the transcenders. They are compassionate, they are creative, they, are, they have humility. They are insightful. And they have much viewpoint. And six others. Okay? Okay. Uh, so uh, let me move on to the, to the third and the last topic of today's talk. Uh, <laughs> Oh. Utilization of right brain. In other words, whole brain thinking, whole brain thinking. The reason why I selected this top topic is, is because I have read this book entitled My Stroke of Insight, written by a new scientist by the name of Jill Taylor. She had stroke when she was 37 years old. But she recovered completely in eight years. She had bleeding on her left side of the brain, where the language centers are located. So she was uh, she could neither speak nor understand the language. I mean, I mean, the, she could not. She uh, she's an American, so uh, like English, she could neither understand or nor uh, speak the English. English. But even though, even though she said she was in a complete happiness, in a complete bliss, <coughs> and we, we, which she referred as nirvana, nirvana in Buddhism, nirvana, do you know this? Buddhist is the Nehan of the Buddhist. So, in this situation, she was in this book. And you can watch her lecture by uh, YouTube, in YouTube, uh, 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 access of this dress, okay? Uh, 
and this is real brain, you know. She is presented, uh, she, she presents brains, yes, yes. And, uh, and she explained in her, in this book, she explains, uh, there is also a Japanese translation, Kiseki no no. But I recommend you to read this original, because I have, I have found a misinterpretation in this book, so uh, I strongly recommend to read this book, okay? <laughs> okay, uh, she explained the different function between left and right brains through her own symptoms. Why, so, so you can understand by reading, why, why she can, uh, she has such a kind of feeling, you know, nirvana, in spite of the fact that she can neither speak nor understand the, understand the language. Okay, uh, based on this book, based on this book, I summarized the function uh, of left brain and right brain uh, as shown in this slide. For example, a right brain administers image and intuition. Uh, and it, and it administered to give a unique answer to individual. For example, you know, what's the meaning of life or what's my mission? And this can be administered by, by right brain. Uh, on the other hand, left brain uh, administered universal answer. You know, entrance examination for university. And, you know, th these are, you know, all the we all, you know, should answer the same result. Otherwise, uh, that you get, you know, not, not full mark. Uh, and right brain also administers resourcefulness or an ability to rise to the occasion, to the emergencies. And right brain also administers altruism or generosity, humility, and it administers curiosity, creation, and imagination. And right brain also administers only uh, present time. You know, everything occurs simultaneously. Past or future, it doesn't matter. At the present. Okay? So, but we are supposed to live by integrating between the left and right brain because those are big, because left and right brains are mutually. Uh, complementary. Okay, we're supposed to live by integrating, but 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 now you know in modern society we live in a complete left brain dominant society, and we maybe we have gone farther. We may be putting too much emphasis on left brain dominant way of thinking. Too much emphasis on left brain way of thinking. And there are, so there are many uh, maladies or poison of this, uh, too much emphasis on left brain way of thinking. And a typical example, I think, is this civil shipwreck disaster uh, in Korea three years ago. And when in this shipwreck disaster, uh, when the ship tilted 45 degrees, there was an announcement that uh, stay where you are. You know, it's absurd to stay there under such circumstances, teaching 45 degrees in emergent situation, under which they should have, you know, they should have acted based on right brain intuition to escape from immediate danger. But they couldn't. Why? Because they were so, so imprinted, so strongly imprinted by left brain dominant way of thinking. In left brain dominant way in our society, we are imprinted to obey instructions, rules and regulations. That's why they couldn't move to toward to shift to right brain way of thinking. And in this book, there are uh, method to move to shift to right brain uh, dominant state instantly, almost instantly. So please read this. Okay. So I I, I suppose that those who are victimized are uh, 300 or more students must have been very uh, diligent, so-called diligent and excellent student. That makes me all the more sorrow and sad and sorrow for the disaster. And I pray for the souls of the victims of 300 students from what I'm a heart. So, so 
what we need is to integrate both left and right brains. Uh, you know, we have, uh, I, today I have talked about meaning and mission of life. And this, can be, this is administered by right brain, okay? And, uh, and resourcefulness. Resourcefulness, or the right, right to the emergency. A synergy of altruism and, and generosity. And serendipity. And curiosity and imagination. These are all administered by right brain. Okay? And remember the five characteristics reported by Abraham Maslow. The characteristic of the transcendence, compassionate, uh, creative, humility, insightful, multiple viewpoint. These are all administered by right brain. So, right brain has very important role. And I emphasize utilization of right brain simply because we are we now live in a left brain complete left brain dominant society. What I advocate is to integrate both of them, both left and right brains. Take Dr. Taylor's case, for example. When she had stroke, she could neither speak nor understand. And yet, she was in nirvana, right? But her feel she couldn't have expressed her feeling if her left brain function didn't recover. There was no way for us that she was in nirvana if her left brain function didn't recover. So what matters most is the integration between left and right brain. You know what I mean? Okay. So, uh, oh, I have five. Okay. Five. So I have uh, five minutes to go. So, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, you may or may not know uh, how about how study of adult development. Uh, this was the longest uh, survey in human history. Uh, it, it, it started 1938. Uh, 724 people, men, were selected uh, at, the, at the age of 19. And half of them were students from Harvard University. And another half was from the, uh, you know, the, 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 the maybe the slum uh, district of the same age. And they, uh, they observed, you know, and, and, and it's still uh, continuing. It's still ongoing. And it's 60 people are still uh, remain. Uh, and the purpose of this study was to determine the most important factor for human happiness and, and good human health. And they found that uh, this is the doctor uh, of the fourth director of this of this study. You know, 75 years. It, it, it was 75 years of observation. And so the, the academic career doesn't has no relation to the uh, uh, to this happiness or the uh, the uh, economical you know uh, gain. Was also not, 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 uh, has no relation. Neither the uh, the social status uh, which the, the person achieved. The the most critical or most important factor was the closeness of human relationship. The closeness of the person and his or her uh, his, uh, for example, families or his friends or. Uh, uh, or, or colleagues. It's quite simple, but it's very, very important, you know, the closeness of human relationship. That determine our happiness. That's the result of 75 years of observation, okay? And you can also see his lecture by addressing this, uh, 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 this code. Okay, uh, no, uh, let, me, let me skip this. Uh, let me skip this. Okay, so this is my uh, the last slide of my uh, ideas, of my creed. And uh, 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 
like a take home message, okay? And I have three uh, keywords or life or messages. But this message was not meant to you. First of all, meant to myself first, okay? And secondly, to my son. But if you buy this, buy this idea, it's yours, okay? Uh, okay, before I introduce you the first uh, life word, let me introduce, let me quote uh, this, this. I must be willing to give up what I am in order to become what I will be. I must be willing to give up what I am today in order to become what I will be tomorrow. The parenthesis, uh, the, the, the words I added, so uh, original word uh, without these parentheses. Can anyone guess who said this? The same person. Einstein. Einstein said this, yes. You know, from this message, we, we know that we recognize that uh, even Einstein wanted to transform himself, right? So, can older people like us uh, grow without self-transformation? My answer is no. So, my first life word or keyword is self-transformation. Self-transformation. But, uh, but I do this not in a very rigid me, but I'm ready. I'm ready to. I'm ready to be flexible to cope with the ever-changing realities of the society and of myself. Of myself, because if when you know I accumulate ages, I, I, there are many things that I cannot do. So, in, in under such circumstances, I have to change. I cope with. The, the, I have to be ready to cope with the changing the reality of myself. That's what I mean, self-transformation. And secondly, uh, always to have the sense of awe and gratitude to everything which occurs to me and enjoy the present moment as much as I can. Just like I, I'm doing right now, okay? And, and always to keep triple C in mind. Triple C stands for compassion, curiosity, and challenge. This is my uh, life order. This is my lesson to, to myself, okay? To myself. Okay, uh, let's skip this. Uh, since, uh, okay, since I advocate, you know, challenge, I did some small challenge by myself. Uh, two years ago, I joined a race to climb a mountain Fuji. Uh, I, I didn't have, uh, you know, confidence, but I dared to challenge. It's, a, it's called Zero Fuji Race. Zero Fuji Race. It literally starts from sea level and aim all the way to the top highest peak of the mountain Fuji Kengamine and then return to the starting place within 24 hours. And it took, for me, it took 17 hours to get to the highest peak of Mount Fuji, and another three hours to return to fifth step. So I had uh, only four hours left, but had still to go, uh, 50 kilometers to go. So uh, I returned from the race. But I made it at least, you know, one way in one stretch. But I didn't have, I didn't have confidence. But I, anyway, did it, you know, I tried it. I, I did have to, I tried it. So, be, you know, be challenging, you know. Uh, uh, do your challenge, any challenges. And uh, this was a picture, uh, uh, this was a picture uh, which appeared on uh, Sanichi Shimba and also Shizoka Shimba next day. Okay. Uh, Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>